my lovely viewers welcome back to my channel today i'll be showing you a lesson plan on quick multiplication of a three digit number by 5 9 9 11 19 25 49 and 99 okay now before i begin i must tell you that a lesson plan has three segments the first segment is introduction the second segment is procedure and the third is closure now the first segment introduction is very important it should not exceed more than five to seven minutes and also it is very important to warm up the students for the lesson you know so the it should be very uh, activity oriented so that students should gear up for the lesson okay and teachers sh should recall the concept that has been learnt in the previous class in the introduction. So to begin with, so without any further delay, let me get started. Okay, now in the introduction, the lesson plan goes like this. The teacher writes the following sum on the board. 324 multiplied by 99 okay next the teacher invites a learner randomly and asks him or her to solve the sum with regular multiplication method now i hope every student knows the regular multiplication method and the student will solve the sum on the board and the expected response of the student will be 32076 that is 32076 the teacher guides the learner if required. Now, the teacher states that there are times in maths class as well as in our daily life where we will have to multiply a whole number by digits like 5, 9, 11, 19, 25, 49 and 99 quickly and accurately. Okay, quickly and accurately. The teacher explains that this method, this regular multiplication method is very time consuming. So today we shall learn about some, some tricks as well as some mental math strategies that will make this multiplication easier. Thus the teacher introduces the concept of quick multiplication to the class. Okay, so this is how the teacher will introduce the topic of quick multiplication to the class. And then the teacher will move to the procedure. Now, the procedure should not exceed more than 30 minutes. Keep that in mind. It should, be, it should vary from 25 to 30 minutes. Now, in procedure, the teacher asks learners to solve the following multiplication problems in their notebooks. The teacher writes on the board example 1. Quick multiply the following a 726 multiplied by 99 the learners discuss among themselves and they find out steps of quick multiply then the teacher explains the steps to quick multiply always you should allow the learners to discuss amongst themselves first and then the teacher should come up with an explanation because it helps the learners to explore to interrogate okay and this helps in clearing of the concept now the teacher explains the steps to quick multiply step one multiply the number by hundred the teacher explains that to solve the given sum we put two zeros at the end and then multiply by 726 so here it goes 726 multiplied by 100 is equal to 72600 step 2 subtract the original three digit number from your result now the original three digit number was 726 and the result that we have got is 72600 so let us subtract the original three digit number from our result so 72600 minus 726 is equal to 71874 thus 726 multiplied by 99 gives us 71874 okay then the teacher asks the learners to solve 
a sum that is 584 multiplied by 99 you know this this uh, has been given by teacher to practice on the sum to practice on the method that has been taught by the teacher so the learners solve 584 multiplied by 99 and then first what they have to do first they have to multiply 584 by 100 the answer which they get is 58400 and then they subtract 584 from 58400 the answer which they get is 57816 okay the teacher may guide the learners whoever needs help then teacher instructs the learners to devise a way to quick multiply 726 multiplied by 9 okay now here the teacher may guide the learners by saying that in order to multiply by 9 or rather quick multiply by 9 what they should do they should first multiply 726 by 10 and the answer will be 7260 and then they can subtract the original number 726 from 7260 to get the final answer that is 7260 minus 726 gives us 6534 okay now next the teacher discusses a sum that is 436 multiplied by 25 how do we do that by quick multiplication step one multiply the number by 100 so 436 multiplied by 100 gives us 43600 and then we divide the result by 4 as you can see on the screen by dividing 43600 by 4 we got we get the answer 10900 that is 10900 thus we can say that 436 multiplied by 25 is equal to 10900 okay so these are all the quick multiplication methods then teacher explains that since 25 multiplied by 4 is equal to 100 so multiplying a number by 100 and then dividing the product by 4 will give us the desired result okay then teacher asks the learners to solve one sum in the notebook that is 297 multiplied by 25 and let the learners come up with the responses the expected response should be 297 multiplied by 100 gives us 29700 and then 29700 divided by divided by 4 gives us 7425 okay the next sum which the teacher discusses with the students is 436 multiplied by 5 now how do we do that step 1 first 436 multiplied by 100 we get 43600 that is 43600 and then step 2 divide the result by 20 43600 divided by 20 gives us 2180 that is 2180 now the teacher must explain that since 20 into 5 gives us 100 so multiplying a number by 100 and then dividing the product by 20 will give us the desired result okay then teacher gives us some or a question based on this that is uh, she asked the learners to multiply or quick multiply 297 into 5 and the expected response should be 297 multiplied by 100 gives us 2 nine seven zero zero and then two nine seven zero zero divided by twenty gives us one four eight five okay clear next sum which the teacher discusses would be three fifty two multiplied by ninety nine so what will be the steps step one first multiply three fifty two by two okay so three fifty two multiplied by two gives us 704 and then step 2 multiply the result by 10 so 704 multiplied by 10 gives us 7040 then step 3 subtract the original number from your result so what is the original number the original number is 352 and the result that we have achieved is 7040 so we will subtract 352 from 7040 which gives us 
6688. So we can say that 352 multiplied by 19, the answer is 6688. So got it viewers? Without doing regular multiplication, you can quick multiply in this way. Then teacher asks the students to quick multiply uh, some like 281 by 19. And the expected response should be like this. First 281 should be multiplied by 2. two and the result would be 562. Then 562 should be multiplied by 10. The result would be 5620. And then... 281 should be subtracted from 5620 to get the final answer that is 5339. Okay. I hope this is clear why we have first multiplied by 2 and then multiplied by 10 and then subtracted the original number because 2 into 10 is equal to 20 and 20 minus 1 is equal to 19. Okay. Now, next after all these questions are discussed, the teacher moves around. <coughs> now remember one thing, while the students are solving the questions in the class, in their notebooks, the teacher should move around the class while they are writing the answers to the discussed question. Okay, it is very important. And then teacher projects the class worksheet and she instructs the learners to solve the problems independently in the notebooks. The teacher guides the learners if required and then the teacher projects the answer keys provided at the end of the class worksheet once the learners have completed the task. The teacher also discusses the answers and clarifies the doubts of the learners if any. Okay, next comes the closure. It should not be more than five minutes. Now here again, the closure should have an activity. Okay, a group activity. So what, here, what I have decided is that the teacher divides the class into five groups. The teacher distributes a set of number cards that is zero to nine to each group. Okay, I hope you all know what are number cards. It is a rectangular shaped card on which a digit is written. So the teacher distributes a set of number cards that is 0 to 9 to each group. Then teacher gives the following instructions to each group. She says that each group will randomly select any three number cards from the given set and then arrange them to form a three digit number. Okay, so what each group will do, they will randomly select any three number cards from the given set of number cards that is 0 to 9 and then arrange those three numbers to form a three digit number. Okay, now there suppose if there are five groups, so five groups will have five different numbers. Then group 1 will quick multiply the number formed by 9. Group 2 will quick multiply the number formed by 19. Group 3 will multiply by 25. Group 4 will, will multiply by 49. And group 5 by 99. Okay. Once solved, the teacher will elicit the answers from each group and appreciate their efforts. Eliciting the answers from the students is very, very important. Always keep in mind. Okay. Now, after the class is over, what is the expected learning outcomes that should be achieved? The learner solves problems of multiplication of a three-digit number by 5, 9, 19, 25, 49 and 99. And learner also is able to calculate quickly and accurately. So these are the learning outcomes which must be achieved after you have executed this lesson plan in the classroom. Okay. So this is it friends. This was a lesson plan based on quick multiplication of a three digit number. I hope you have liked it and it will prove useful to you. If yes, then please give a thumbs up, share and subscribe to my channel. Till then, bye bye.
Hello everyone, once again welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you a lesson plan on quick multiplication of a 3 digit number by 5, 9, 11, 19, 25, 49 and 99 etc. Now let me tell you that this lesson plan is part 2. All right, and part one of this lesson plan has already been uploaded the previous day. So those of you who have not watched my previous video related to this topic, please visit my channel to watch the particular video. I have also given the link in the description box. Please check out and watch that video as well so that you understand the flow and the link of the two lesson plans. Okay, so without any further delay, let me get started with part 2. Now, to begin with, I must say that the lesson plan has three segments that is introduction, procedure and closure. Introduction should not be more than 5 to 7 minutes. Keep that in mind. Okay, so to begin with, the teacher divides the class into five groups. The teacher assigns the following multiplication sums to each group. Group 1, 295 multiplied by 99. Group 2, 384 multiplied by 9. Group 3, 241 multiplied by 5. Group 4, 415 multiplied by 25. Group 5, 870 multiplied by 19. Once all the sums are solved, the teacher elicits answers from them and records the responses on the board. The teacher makes corrections if required. The teacher states that we have learned how to quick multiply a whole number with digits like 99, 9, 25, 5 and 19 in the previous class. Today we shall learn about quick multiplication with one more digit that is 11. All right. So this is how the teacher introduces the. This is uh, so. This is how the teacher recalls the topic that was learnt in the previous class. Recalling the topic always helps the children to link with the previous knowledge and the knowledge that the teacher is going to deliver in today's session. Okay. So introduction always gears up the children for the rest of the lesson to follow. Next comes the procedure. Keep in mind that procedure should not exceed more than 30 minutes. It should vary from 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. Now the teacher continues to write the next sum on the board. 1325 multiplied by 11. The teacher explains the following steps along with the diagram that you can see on the screen. What are the steps? Add two consecutive digits of 1325. Okay, then put them between 1 and 5. St start from the right side and then proceed to the left. Note the rightmost digit of 1325 is 5. So 5 plus 2 becomes 7. So Note 7 to the left of 5. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Then 2 plus 3 becomes 5. Note 5 to the left of 7. Okay. Then 3 plus 1 becomes 4. Note 4 to the left of 5. Can you see? Okay. So when we have written the first digit to the left of 4575 altogether the number that we get is 14575 thus we can say that 1325 multiplied by 11 gives us 14575 clear okay then using the same method the same steps the teacher instructs the the students to quick multiply 618 by 11 in their notebooks and the expected response of the students should be 6798 however keep in mind while the learners are answering to the discussed question teacher must move around the class and guide those learners who need help okay then the teacher proceeds to show the learners a bag 
teacher says that the cost of the bag is 99 rupees okay the teacher asks the learners to find the cost of 150 such bags then what will the students say the, the students will say the answer the cost of the bag is 150 multiplied by 99 the teacher explains that we can simply find the cost of 150 such bags by multiplying 150 by 99 similarly the cost of 530 bags can also be evaluated by multiplying 530 by 99 isn't it the, the teacher explains that they have already learned about quick multiplication method now they shall learn how to apply the knowledge of quick multiplication method to solve the mathematical problems in their daily life okay once again i repeat the students have already learned the concept of quick multiplication now they are going to learn how to apply the knowledge of quick multiplication to solve the multiplication problems that occurs in the daily life the teacher continues to display the following chart to the learners the chart reads out as steps to solve the number stories involving quick multiplication are as follows step 1 Now this chart this particular chart shows the steps whenever a word problem is given to the students to solve the students should follow the following steps step number 1 says that read and understand the word problems step number 2 identify and underline the important facts step 3 underline the keywords that denote multiplication okay and then step 4 solve the word problems using the quick multiplication so these four steps are very important whenever a student has to solve a word problem and he or she must follow these four steps consecutively in order to solve a word problem okay now the no- teacher is requested to write the following steps on a chart paper well ahead of time so that when the class begins she, she can use the class eff- chart effectively okay then the teacher reads the steps to solve the word problems and teacher explains the following examples to the learners example 1 A library has 113 shelves with 99 books each. How many books are there in the library? The teacher asks the following questions from the class. How many shelves the library has? Expected response of the students based on the question should be 113. Question number 2. How many books are there in each shelf? Expected response 99. So how many books are there in the library? expect the response 113 into 99 then the teacher explains that in order to calculate the total number of books in the library we have to quick multiply 113 by 99 okay then the teacher explains the following steps on the board and asks the learners to note them down in the notebooks step 1 113 multiplied by 100 gives us 11300 step 2 11300 minus 113 gives us 11187 the teacher states that there are 11187 books in the library okay the teacher must encourage the learners to always answer in complete sentences now teacher proceeds to solve example number 2 this 25 schools have 215 pupils each in a certain province how many pupils are in those 25 schools the teacher asks the below questions and elicits answers from the learners question 1 how many schools are there expected response 25 how many pupils are there in each school expected response 215 so how many pupils are there in 25 schools expected response 215 multiplied by 25 so the teacher explains that in order to calculate the total number of pupils in 25 schools we have to quick multiply 215 by 25 the teacher explains the following steps on the board and asks the learners to note them down in the notebooks 
Step 1 says that 215 multiplied by 100 gives us 21,500 and step 2 we have to multiply the product we have to divide the product by 4 that is 21,500 divided by 4 gives us 5375 that is 5375 okay thus the teacher states that there are 5375 pupils in 25 schools okay then the teacher proceeds to explain example number three a school bought 19 boxes of pencils each box had 144 pencils how many pencils are there altogether the teacher asked the below questions to elicit answers from the learners question one what is given in the question okay that's question two what is to be find out question three how is it to be find out very important first question what is given in the question students should answer a school bought 19 boxes of pencils each boxes had 114 144 pencils what is to be find out how many pencils are there and how is it to be find out so when each box had 144 pencils so how many box ha how many pencils does 19 boxes have correct now this is very important the first question says that what is given in the question the ideal answer should be what is given in the question that a school bought 19 boxes of pencils and each box had 144 pencils what is to be find out how many pencils are there in 19 boxes correct and how is it to be find out when each box that is one box had 144 pencils then 19 boxes will have 144 multiplied by 19 pencils correct so then the teacher discusses the steps with the learners and instructs them to solve the sum in the notebooks while the students are solving the teacher moves around the class and guides them who need help now after a few while the teacher may also invite a learner and ask the learner to solve the sum on the board and the remaining students can check the answer for accuracy the expected response should be 144 multiplied by 2 gives us 288 then 288 multiplied by 10 gives us 2880 and then 2880 minus 144 gives us 2736 thus there are 2736 pencils in 19 boxes now why this method is followed i have told you before also whenever we have to multiply a number by 19 the quick multiplication method is that first we multiply the number by 2 then by 10 so that we get the product that is multiplied by 20 and then we subtract the original number from the product because 20 minus 1 is 19 so when we subtract the original number we get the final answer okay so use this method to find out the multiplication in an easier and quicker manner next the teacher continues with an activity a very interesting activity now as i have said before activity based learning is very important in these days because it makes the learning much more effective than the lecture method or rote learning method because children enjoy doing activity and and practical approach towards any concept makes the understanding of the concept very clear and last longing for the learners so activity based learning you should include in your lesson plans keep that in mind so the teacher continues with an activity the teacher divides the class into four groups the teacher keeps four sheets of paper in a bowl the teacher gives the following instructions to each group the first instruction says that one representative from each group will pick up a chit from the bowl and read out the question to the respective group members then each group will solve the question collectively and present it to the class the question written on each sheet of paper are as follows keep a note that one question should be written on each chit okay questions like you can write, uh, make your own questions viewers that is your choice i can give you four examples here 
example 1 there are 150 boxes of oranges each weighing 99 kg quick multiply to find the total weight why should we have fruits then question 2 a container weighs 500 grams what is the weight of 19 such containers name the three modes of transport question 3 there are 135 learners each weighing 49 kg in a class quick multiply to find their total mass what kind of food should we eat to maintain a balanced and healthy diet in question 4 there are 11 schools each has 455 pupils quick multiply to find the total number of pupils in the schools why should we read books now if you would have noticed viewers the second part of each question is also related with social science correct it is very important you should always try to link your math subject with any other subject like english history social science etc this way students have an integrated learning approach towards any subject and this way they have a wider range of knowledge and how to apply the mathematical knowledge in solving daily life situations okay so for example question number one asks why should we have fruits so children should be the children will become aware of the benefits of fruits question two name the three modes of transports they will have knowledge about it which are the three modes of transport okay and what are their own benefits and disadvantages also why what kind of food should we eat to maintain a balanced and healthy diet which every child today should be knowing considering the environment that we live in and also why should we read books yes very important to instill the reading habits among children so only if you inculcate such questions along with mathematical questions like why should we read books students will also come to know the benefits and the advantages of reading books and thereby they might they must be or they will be encouraged to read books at home okay so always remember to integrate mathematics with any other subject like english history science geography whichever subject you like but always try to integrate it with any other subject that makes the learning much more interesting and meaningful it, it makes sense because then it is relatable to our practical life situations okay now note that these questions should be written on chits of paper before the class begins so that this activity can be conducted seamlessly now after the activity is conducted teacher should project the class worksheet and should uh, give, should uh, give few sums to the students to solve and while the students are solving teacher should move around the class and guide the learners who need help teacher should also discuss the answers and clarifies doubts of the learners if any the questions which have to be given in the class worksheet can be something like this as you can see on the screen after the procedure comes the closure teacher may write the following question on the board and randomly select a learner to solve it question says we are five in our group each of us has 520 rupees how much money do we have okay let the students discuss in groups and come up with their answers it is very important to elicit the answers in the closure so that you come to know that whatever you have taught how much has been understood by the students closure helps you to understand whether the objective of the lesson plan has been achieved or not so always try to elicit more and more answers from the students in closure then comes the learning outcomes whether the learning count outcomes have been achieved or not now which are the learning outcomes that must be achieved after you have executed this lesson plan in the classroom the first one the learner saw 
solves multiplication of a three digit number by 5, 9, 11, 19, 25, 49 and 99. Second learning outcome, the learner applies the knowledge of multiplication in solving mul mathematical problems in daily situation. Third, the learner calculates quickly and accurately. So this is it friends. I hope you have liked this lesson plan. If yes, then please give a thumbs up like share and subscribe to my channel so that i upload more videos like this and you get to see them till then bye bye yeah. hello everyone once again welcome back to my channel today i'll be showing you a lesson plan based on the topic multiplication of whole numbers by a three digit number now a lesson plan must have three segments that is introduction procedure and closure let me begin with introduction keep in mind that introduction should not exceed more than five minutes all right so the teacher writes one sum on the board and randomly invites five learners and asks them to do the five steps one by one as you can see on the screen there is a multiplication sum which will be given on the board then five learners will be in the invited randomly and they will solve the steps one by one. Step one, the first learner will multiply five by six once. As you can see, it gives us 30, right? Then step two, the second learner will multiply five tenths by five and then add the carryover to it. The result which we get is 280. Then step 3, the third learner will first insert a 0 at the extreme right, then multiply 6 ones by 8. And the result that we get is 280. The fourth learner will multiply 5 tenths by 8 and then add the carry over to it. And the result that we get, the second, now the step 3 goes like this. The third learner will insert a 0 at the extreme right and then multiply 6 once by 8 and the result that we get is 80. And then step 4, the fourth learner will multiply 5 tenths by 8 and then add the carry over to it and the result that we get is 4480. And in step 5, the fifth learner will add both the rows that is 280 and 4480 and the final answer that we get is 4760 that is 4760. Now this was a typical regular multiplication method. This was essential to begin the class with so that the learners can recall the multiplication by a two digit number. Note that the teacher can ask the learners to use diff three different colored chalks for all the three rows. The reason why I am saying to use three different colored chalks is that it will make the three rows look distinctive and also it will look colorful and attractive for the children to show interest in learning. Okay, now remember that it, whatever is uh, done in introduction is basically used to recall the concept that has been learnt in the previous class so that they can link it with the knowledge that is going to that the teacher is going to deliver in the present session for example in this session the children are going to learn about multiplication by three digit number so what the teacher has done in the introduction she has recalled the concept of multiplication by a two digit number okay which they already knew this was the previous knowledge and now the teacher says that they already know how to perform multiplication of a two digit number by a two digit number today we will learn how to perform multiplication of a three digit number by a three digit number okay so this is how the teacher will introduce the topic and warm up the students for the lesson to follow then comes the procedure which should not exceed more than 30 minutes. The teacher writes the question in the class, how will you multiply three digits, students? For example, she writes the sum on the board, 365 into 241. Now listen, always, always, whenever you write a question on the board, do not start immediately solving the question. Always wait for the learner's response, elicit answers from them, and then explain the method 
okay so here also the teacher waits for the learner's response and then explains the method of multiplication step 1 she says here you can choose any number as the multiplicand and the multiplier okay the teacher explains that since here both the numbers have the same number of digits any number can be chosen as a multiplicand and any number can be chosen as the multiplier let us take 365 as the multiplicand and 241 as the multiplier then arrange them in vertical columns as you can see on the screen then step 2 the digit in the ones column of the multiplier is 1 First multiply 365 by 1 and we get 365 right in the first row. Then step 3, we have to multiply 365 by 4 but we have to place 1 0 in the 1's column of the second row, right? So here we get 365 into 4, we get 1 4 6 0. So write the product in the second row. Then the digit in the hundredths place of the multiplier is 2. We have to multiply 365 by 2. In this case, place zeros in the ones and tens columns of the next row. So we get 365 by 2. We get the answers 730. So finally, the second row as we can see is 73000. Then step 5, add these products to get the final answer. So as you can see, when the three rows were added, 365, 1460073000, we got the final answer as 87965, that is 87965. Then the teacher asked the learners to compare the method of multiplication by a two-digit and the three-digit numbers. Okay, she asked them to compare the method of multiplication by two-digit and three-digit numbers. The teacher elicits the responses from the learners that in case of three-digit multiplication, there is one additional step. That is, we also have to multiply the multiplicand by the hundredth digit of the multiplier. Again, I repeat, the difference between the two methods of multiplication, that is by two-digit and three-digit numbers, is that the students themselves will say that they have to in case of three digit multiplication, there is one additional step. They have to multiply the multiplicand by the hundredths digit of the multiplier. The method is the same for two digit multiplication except for the fact that the number of digits in the multiplier has increased. Okay, so let the children discover this on their own and come up with their answers. Remember always encourage the learners to come up with their answers because this will help them clear the concept more. Then after this, the teacher continues with an activity. She conducts a pair activity for which the teacher divides the class into pairs and instructs them to work as pairs. The teacher instructs them to name themselves as student 1 and student 2 respectively. The teacher projects the activity sheet on the screen or distributes the activity sheet to each pair and gives the following instructions to the pairs. Okay, now what are the instructions? Student 1 in each pair will solve the sums written below x and student 2 in each pair will solve the sums written below y. As you can see on the screen, there are sums given below x and there are sums given below y. So the student 1 will solve the sums written below x and student 2 in each pair will sol solve the sums written below y. Okay. First they will solve the sums which are given in the first row of the game. Okay. First they will solve the sums which are given in the first row and then whichever learner gets the larger number will mark the game board anywhere with an x or 0. I repeat, whichever learner gets the larger number will mark the game board anywhere with an X or 0. For example, if the learner 1 gets the larger number, then he or she will mark the game board anywhere with an X since he is solving problems below X. Got it? So this way they will continue to solve the problems in rest of the rows in the similar manner. Whichever learner gets 3x or 3o in a row will be declared as the winner. Now this is a very very interesting game 
for the pairs they will also this will be very enjoyable activity for them because while they will playing the game which they already fond of tic tac toe they will also use the concept of multiplication and thereby have a thorough practice of it okay so it is very important to inculcate activities in, in your lesson plans because first of all children enjoy doing it and they they include the concept that they have learned in while doing that activity therefore they adopt a practical approach and by adopting a practical approach they learn the concept better and more clearly okay now once this activity is over the teacher will assign few questions for class work as you can see on the screen the teacher will ask the students to solve these questions in their notebooks teacher will move around the classroom while the students will be solving these questions teacher should guide the students who need help and then comes the closure as i said before closure is very important to review whether the objective of the lesson has been achieved or not that is whether the lesson has been understood by the students or not so here the teacher should always ask such questions and elicit answers from students so, so that she understands how much this lesson has been understood by them so the teacher writes the below question as you can see on the board and then teacher invites three learners randomly to solve the first three rows of multiplication using the method which has been discussed in the procedure and then teacher invites a fourth learner to add the three rows to get the final product or the final answer the rest of the class should check for their accuracy the teacher appreciates the learners efforts and give a round, and the whole class gives a round of applause then what is the learning outcome that should be achieved from this lesson plan well firstly the learner solves multiplication of a three digit number by a three digit number the learner calculates quickly and accurately the learner applies the knowledge of multiplication in developing personal confidence in the use of numbers this is very important that whenever a learner applies the knowledge of multiplication it should develop a kind of personal confidence in the use of numbers because this knowledge they have to apply while dealing with their daily life situations okay so this is it friends i hope you have liked this lesson plan if yes then please give a thumbs up like share and subscribe to my channel and also comment in the section below and let me know what kind of lesson plans you want so that i can upload for you guys thank you for watching bye bye hello everyone once again welcome back to my channel today i'll be showing you a lesson plan based on the topic multiplication of three digit number by three digit number now let me tell you that this lesson plan is part 2 on the topic part 1 on the same topic has already been uploaded on my channel in my previous video so please check out that lesson plan as well so that you understand the link and flow of the two lesson plans so without any further delay let me start first the lesson plan starts with introduction now the introduction should not exceed 5 to 7 minutes keep that in mind the teacher begins the class by opening the link given as you can see on the screen okay there is a link teacher clicks on the link and when she clicks on the link she shows a number wheel to the class teacher informs that today they will have to spin this wheel to form three digit numbers and then perform the multiplication the teacher demonstrates how to click on the spin button of the wheel with the help of the mouse then the teacher patiently waits for the wheel to halt at one place and then notes down the corresponding digit that that is close to the pointer on the board then the teacher randomly invites three learners 
to spin the wheel one by one and asks them to note down the digits on the board. Once that three digit by three digit number is formed, the teacher randomly invites more three learners and asks them to do the three steps of multiplication one by one on the board. Okay. Then teacher invites a learner to add the three rows to get the final product. After the final product is found out, the teacher appreciates the learner's efforts. Okay, so this was the introduction. Here the teacher had included an activity, an online game activity, which involved the process of multiplication. The purpose was to warm up the children for the lesson to follow. Introduction should always be activity oriented so that it gears up the children for the procedure. Okay, it should always be uh, to recall the concept that has been learnt in the previous class. Keep that in mind. So after the introduction, the teacher moves to the procedure. Now the procedure should not be more than 30 minutes. The teacher states that we have learnt about multiplication of three digit by three digit in the previous class. Today we shall learn about how to apply the knowledge of multiplication in solving the mathematical problems in our daily life. The teacher explains the following examples to the learners on the board. Example 1. There are 258 hotels in a certain country. In one holiday season, each hotel received 415 visitors. How many visitors were there during that season? Okay. Now, the teacher displays the following manual chart paper to the learners. Okay. Now, on that chart paper, steps are written how to solve the word problems or number stories. Teacher reads out those steps. Step 1, read and understand the word problem. Step 2, says identify and underline the information. Step 3, underline the keywords that denote multiplication. Step 4, solve the word problems using multiplication. Now, note, the teacher is requested to write the following steps on the chart paper before the class begins. Then the teacher reads the steps to solve the following word problems involving multiplication. Teacher asks the following questions from the class. How many hotels are there in the country? Expected response of the students will be 258. Then how, second question, how many visitors did each hotel receive in the holiday season? Expected response 415. Then third question, what is to be find out in the question? Expected response, total number of visitors during that season. Then final question, which operation should we perform to find the answer? Expected response, multiplication. Then the teacher explains that in order to calculate the total number of visitors during that season, we have to multiply 258 by 415. The teacher explains the following steps on the board and asks the students to note them down in the notebooks. Now you can see here 258 into 4, 415 when multiplied. The first row gives 1290. The second row gives 2580. And the third as you can see 1,3200. On adding the three rows we get the final answer. 1,7070. Okay, so the first step was to multiply the ones, that is 265 into 5. Then second step was to multiply by tens, that is 258 into 1. And the third step was to multiply by hundreds, that is 258 into 4. Okay, so this is how the step of multiplications are performed. Then finally, the teacher states that there were 107070 that is 1,7070 visitors during that season. Teacher encourages the students to answer, always answer in complete sentences. Then teacher discusses example number two. It says that 
135 rings are needed to decorate the ceiling of each room in a hotel. The hotel has 221 similar rooms. Explain how many rings are needed. Now the teacher asks the following questions from the class. How many rings are needed to decorate the ceiling of each room in the hotel? Expected response 135. How many similar rooms the hotel has? Expected response of students 221. So how many rings are needed? Expected response 135 into 221. The teacher explains that in order to calculate the total number of rings, we have to multiply 15 by 21. Then teacher explains the following steps on the board and asks the learners to note them down in the notebooks. So as you can see on the screen, 135 multiplied by 221. The students will follow the same step. Step 1 multiplied by 1, that is 135 into 1 gives us 135. Then multiply by 10, that is 135 into 2 gives us 2700. And multiply by 100, 135 into 2, 27,000. Then adding all the three rows, we get the final product 29,835. So the teacher states that 29,835 rings are needed to decorate all the rooms in the hotel. Then teacher proceeds to discuss example number 3. A district received 375 cartoons of exercise books. Each cartoon holds 180 exercise books. How many exercise books were received? The teacher asks the below questions to elicit answers from the learners. Question 1. What is given in the question? Question 2. What is to be find out? Question 3. How is it to be found? find out? The teacher discusses the steps with the learners and instructs them to solve it in the notebooks. The teacher moves around in the class while the learners write the answers to the discussed question. The expected response of the given question will be 375 multiplied by 180 gives us 67,500. Okay, then teacher projects the class worksheet and students have to solve those sums in the notebooks. Okay, so these are the questions which the teacher can give in the class worksheet as you can see on the screen. Okay, after these sums are solved, teacher can discuss the answers and clarifies the doubts of the learners if any. Then comes the closure. Closure should not exceed more than 5 minutes. Then for the closure again teacher conducts a small activity. Remember closure should be uh, such that the teacher is able to review that whether the objective of the lesson has been achieved or not. That is whether the lesson has been understood by the students or not. Okay, So it should always involve an activity in which the teacher can gauge whether how much the lesson has been understood. So here the teacher displays the PPT okay, and she asks the learners to solve the given question. Now as you can see the question on the PPT slide says that a shopkeeper had 112 bottles of juice. He sold each of them at Rs. 350. How much money did he get? Okay, allow the students to solve the question, elicit answers from them. Okay, expected response would be the shopkeeper got 39200, that is 39,200 rupees. Now, again, after this particular question is solved, teacher shows them a few keywords. Okay, and then teacher asks them to compose a word problem using those keywords. As you can see, the keywords given are 100 bunches of bananas, each bunch 50 bananas, total number of bananas. Teacher will ask those learners to use these keywords and compose a word problem. Okay, let them discuss in groups and come up with their answers. Teachers should accept all the relevant answers and correct the wrong ones. Okay, so after this lesson plan ex is executed, what could be the learning outcomes achieved? Number one, the learner solves multiplication of whole numbers by a three digit number quickly and accurately. 
number two the learner applies the knowledge of multiplication in solving mathematical problems related to real life situations very important whatever concept the student is learning he must be able to apply the knowledge of that concept in solving the real life or daily life situations the learner should have that confidence after practicing learner should get that confidence that he can apply that knowledge in solving day to day or real life situations the learner number 3 the learner applies the knowledge of multiplication in developing the personal confidence in the use of numbers okay so these were the three learning outcome that should be achieved when this lesson plan is executed in the classroom so this is it my dear viewers i hope you have liked this lesson plan if yes then please comment in the section below and let me know which kind of lesson plan on which topic you want to see so that i will upload it as soon as possible and you get to see them and if you have liked this particular video then please it's my request to share this video to your friends peer groups and subscribe to my channel till then bye bye